What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Blurred It Out. We are still on break week. One Piece has got like two more weeks, I think, until it comes back. So we're not going to have any new chapter talk. I don't really have any One Piece news this week. I mean, it's basically just been the usual stuff, like the usual Twitter, any Twitter agenda. Zoro versus Sanji, who is stronger than who. A bunch of wild stuff going on. If you if you don't keep up with the, the any Twitter, it's it's actually really funny. A lot of the takes, the takes, like, they almost wrap around from being absolutely absurd to people being legitimately serious about some things. All in all, it's it's really good stuff. But today, I want to talk about anime and certain anime that are pretty much hyped up to be the, the new front runners, but are actually kind of mid. But before we get to that, a word from our sponsors. You are now listening to the Blurred Out Podcast, which is available on your favorite podcast websites like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Check the link in the description or search Blurred Out wherever you podcast and you will find greatness. Episodes are also uploaded on my main YouTube channel at Tyrant King Kuma and on the official podcast YouTube channel at Blurred Out Podcast. And of course, if you're not caught up to anime such as My Hero, Seven Deadly Sins, Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, Please know there will be spoilers ahead. Oops. Spoilers. So let's start off with My Hero. Because My Hero had such a strong start. I think I think My Hero kind of came onto the scene where Shonen had slowed down a little bit. Like we, we had the big three and there wasn't a whole lot of commotion everywhere else. I think... Uh, I don't, I don't know the exact timing because you got to think about things like uh, Attack on Titan coming out, things like Black Clover. It's in that era. And the, the anime had such a strong start. I remember the first season of the anime left a huge impression on me, enough to adamantly recommend other people to start watching. Like whenever, because I, I always try One Piece first, naturally. But whenever One Piece is like the hard sell, I got to switch to something lighter. So I'll give it My Hero. And that was also like an introductory anime where it's like, if you don't watch a lot of anime, maybe you should start here. And honestly, I still think it's a really solid beginner anime. Like you, if you look at My Hero compared to something like Black Clover, I'd probably recommend My Hero. I think it's more digestible. I think the characters are better, honestly. I think that the pacing is better. I think it's just... The, the start overall is just better. And and I continue to watch My Hero. I mean, I I keep up with the manga currently. It's like the, the latest chapters. I keep up with all that. The anime, however, has been losing me. And I think it started in the overhaul arc where I kind of started being disinterested. Because here's the thing. The first season you have, you have the strong buildup and you have All Might versus the Nomu. That was crispy that was a good entryway into the anime scene having that fight and just establishing each character like that that season did such a good job and then season two did a really good job on building on the characters particularly the students and and of that Todoroki versus Deku is probably one of my favorite moments of the series because that that fight is just so crispy but as the series goes on, I feel like it starts to lose sight of what it is because there's there's a video. Um, so this is basically where they do My Hero. And one of the things they talk about is how basically the villain of the week is pretty much the League of Villains. And you have villains outside of that. You have like Stain, who's a really strong villain that's not exactly a League of Villains person. But it i mean you also have gentle who is my favorite villain and who technically isn't really a villain but is a villain anti-hero whatever you want to call him. gentle is one of my favorite characters of the series you have really interesting characters like that but it always just cycles back to the league of villains and honestly at first i thought shigaragi was interesting like he posed a threat and he had a certain ideology and i felt like him coming in remind me of blackbeard a little bit because he would just show up do some things that were in his interest and it did and i was like okay he's building to something 
you know, he's not just charging in. He's got, he's got some things planned. Uh, but, but as time went on, he kind of just became this clear arc villain where it's like, okay, he's going to be the end game villain. Let's power him up. Let's kind of just remove the main characterization because right now he's just like kind of, he's just all about destroying. But I feel like in the earlier seasons, he used to have particular goals in mind in like a way he wanted to do things. He felt like a, a bit, you know, childish, naive, but he felt like a, a crime boss. But now he feels like a generic main villain. It's just, it's nasty. I don't like it because they, they basically turned him into all for one who was the generic main villain. And it's like still kind of the generic main villain, but it's back and forth between him and Shigaraki. But I don't know that that part on the villain side really lost me because I really enjoyed what they were trying to do with villains, especially the idea of bringing up villains who, who aren't just evil to be evil who are evil for like very specific reasons. Like Stain was evil because he felt that the, the age of heroes after All Might were pretty much weak posers. It's like, you guys don't have the, the tenacity. You guys don't have the heart to be heroes. And I have to prove that to you. That's interesting. Gentle was a villain because he tried really hard to make it as a hero. And he kept failing. And not only did he keep failing, he was never encouraged. So he kind of felt his place of villainy because it was like, well, what else do I have? I tried being a hero. Not only did I fail, but people told me I shouldn't be a hero. And they they shunned me. You know, my family shunned me, my friends. So I guess I'll be a villain. What else am I going to do? Like, that's those are interesting takes. Uh, Shigaraki, like I said, he was interesting. Now he's kind of just generic. Um, Dobby, I feel like Dobby is too... He's too, like, ham-fisted in his villainy. He started off as the cool, aloof villain that's working with Shigaraki. You know, that was interesting. And he kind of grew into this... I don't know, it's like he wants the spotlight, and now he's just acting out to act out. He's basically being a misbehaved child. Which, I mean, I'm not going to say he doesn't have the, the, the right mentality to do that based on his backstory and everything with Endeavor and his family. But it takes away so much characterization of his, of his villainy when it's just like, okay, well, now he's just acting out of spite and being petty. Like, that's not cool. That's not interesting. And I mean, the, the most interesting uh, villain from the villains, to, in my personal opinion, was Twice. I thought Twice had a compelling backstory. And the fact that he didn't really have motivation, motivation like some of the other ones. Like, he was evil, but he was more twisted than he was evil. He was, like, mentally unhinged. And somehow still had good human qualities, despite being that unhinged. Like, a very... He, he doesn't teeter on the, the realm of anti-hero. He's still definitely a villain. But he gives off the air of anti-hero because he cares so much about... His people. Uh, I couldn't care less about Spinner, to be honest. Spinner feels so wedged into the story. And they keep, like, doing weird, like, sections of Spinner where we talk about Spinner and then we just forget about Spinner. And then we go back and I'm like, why are we doing this? This either makes Spinner more important or give up on Spinner. And, like, it's it kind of happens with the rest of them, too. Compress... Compress is cool. He doesn't really have a strong presence, though, unfortunately. I would like to see more of Compress. Like, it's that kind of thing, where they had a strong start as characters, but they fall off over time. And you can say the same thing about the the main cast, the heroes. Because I think Deku starts off as a really interesting MC. He starts off as this kid who knows he can't do anything, but it's going to try anyway. And it's not the, the determination to get things done. Like, he's not a Terminator in the sense that most shonen are. He is in the sense that it's who he wants to be. So he's trying to do it. Like, despite knowing he can't do it, he's going to try anyway. Because that's what he would do if he could do it. 
and then he gets the ability to do it. And that starts to make him kind of boring. Like, I like the fact that he grew out of this coward baby nature, but now he's this really offset vigilante nature, which doesn't feel like Deku at all. And there's no, there's no real indicator of him going down that path. It's kind of just, he's Deku, and then he's this other Deku. And that's what happens to a good portion of the students, like Bakugo, for example. Bakugo used to be a terrible person. And then all of a sudden, he's just Deku's best friend. And, you know, there's bits and pieces that will will try to be brought together as development, but it doesn't justify the complete 180 of his character. Uh, never was interested in Ochako. I don't think she really changed as much, but I don't think she really developed as much either. I feel like she's kind of been true to who she is, and I, I can imagine that there's more to her character, but we just don't get that. Unfortunately, I think she has the she has the tax of being like not necessarily the the main main like Bakugo is. Bakugo is connected to Deku, but also has his own kind of like arc. Ochako kind of exists to match up with other people's arcs, which takes away a lot of her time. I would say Todoroki is doing the best as far as characterization goes i think from what he was at the beginning to what he is now makes the most sense i just think that he halted somewhere and he really hasn't progressed since like to me he still feels confused about the type of hero he wants to be he just doesn't feel like a surefire i know what i want to do now he still feels like he's searching which isn't a bad thing but i just feel like he he hasn't really changed since that Type of mentality occurred and then the rest of the cast is just not there and this is a problem with just about any show that brings forth a bunch of characters in a cast that ultimately get left behind i mean you see it with naruto you see it with one piece sometimes it's it's a common thing it's unfortunate because some of my favorites are these these tertiary characters that just get no screenplay or just get random shots of screenplay that don't really portray to the character. Like Momo, for one, is one of my favorites and she shows up every now and again, but just basically as a jobber. She shows up, she does a specific job and then like the arc just pretends like she wasn't there anymore until the end. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the fate of class A down the rest. If you aren't part of like the main I'd say four, you really just get jobbed. And they even went as far as jobbing the the big three. And Muriel's my favorite character of the entire series. And the fact that he kind of gets tossed around and used. I don't know. It just I feel like he gets used so disrespectfully. Especially for someone who is said to be the next number one, including the pros. And the fact that, you know, he's kind of just a jobber now too. That's insane. And it, it creates this air where in order to make Deku the best, you kind of make everyone else worse. And I kind of feared that was going to happen once. Once once we lost All Might and once uh, Deku started accumulating more powers, I was like, OK, so he's going to keep rising and people around him are going to keep dropping. Because if you even look at the state of heroes now, all the pros are like in shambles. Mirko is just they they had Mirko go ham just to basically end her career. I mean, Stars and Stripes went ham and her career. Crust, Midnight, uh, Endeavor's probably not going to have a career after this either. Well, you know, maybe. But Endeavor's at that point where he's like all might when he had his injury. Best genus is damaged and really can't hang on that long. Like, like all of the main pros are pretty much out of commission. And this could be like an ushering in the new era of heroes. But I don't think the new heroes are ready for that. I feel like we got rid of the old without the new being ready. And so what 
in my opinion, what we have left over is a cast that has become mostly uninteresting, uh, a villain who has become generic, and a setting that's not as appealing as it was beforehand. Now, I will admit that the, the manga is picking things up. I think it's starting to look better in the manga, but I think the anime for now has just lost me. They're trying to get me back with Mirko, but I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to fall for it. But so then what makes anime kind of thrive if, if you know, my hero who had such a good start had these, these issues? Because we look at, say, Demon Slayer. Now, Demon Slayer, every time it comes around, has crazy hype. People are always excited to start the new Demon Slayer season. The thing about Demon Slayer is that once the season airs and the last episode is on, give it probably a week. No one's talking about it. Like the new, whatever new anime is airing, that's people we're talking about now. They go back to the, the general discussions of like, you know, the, the main animes. Like it just, it falls off so fast. I've, I've never seen any other anime that has such a high peak do that. And it happens every season. And to me, I feel like that's because the, the story isn't gripping enough. Now, I think it's too much to say that Demon Slayer is carried on animation. The animation is, of course, gorgeous. And I will admit, that's the reason I started watching is because of the animation. But there are certain characters that keep me involved. Shinobu is my favorite character. I... I'm very upset that we haven't seen more of her. I'm also okay with that because whenever any of the the characters hang out with Tanjiro for too long, uh, especially like the Hashiras, they die. So I'm going to need her to not hang out with him, if at all possible. But you, you deal with this issue where, personally, I think Tanjiro is a crappy MC. I mean, the whole thing is he's trying to basically revert Nezuko back to normal by fighting and defeating Muzan. But that's all there is to it, right? I mean, I, I will admit, I haven't read Demon Slayer. And, you know, maybe I don't know all of the lore of Demon Slayer. But as far as the anime goes, I watch it for the fights. I watch it for certain characters. And that's about it. Like, the story drags on to me so much. Because, I mean, what's what's really happened in the, what, three seasons we have of Demon Slayer? I mean, in all three, Tanjiro tried to get stronger, said he was stronger, and then an upper-level demon came, mopped him and whoever he was with, and then he cried about it. And that's, that's happened three times now. And I guess at some point, he's supposed to be as strong as the Hashiros, but even the Hashiros struggle with, with the upper-level demons. So him getting that strong, one kind of crazy i'm assuming he's gonna have some crazy power-ups in the near future but it makes him boring now because i i kind of tire of the fights where he's like i gotta do something i gotta get stronger i gotta i gotta figure something out and he spends like five minutes in his head just trying to figure out something to do next while the demon's murdering a village it's just like i kind of wish you were stronger already and you should be better and yet Demon Slayer is still one of the, I mean, I, I believe it is ended by now, but it had a huge run of popularity. And it even kicked off this idea of movie arcs. Maybe not kicked off, it popularized the idea of movie arcs. So like, it definitely has its motion in the community, but it just doesn't seem to have staying power, which is weird. Does that make it mid? Uh, I mean, to me... I really wouldn't say it's like one of my top tiers. I wouldn't say it's a top tier. You know, it might be a top 30, but you know, I don't know. It just doesn't stick to me. I, I need the story to either pick up speed or become more interesting. Because now let's look at Jujutsu Kaisen, which also had a strong start out the gate. Now, I think Jutsu Kaisen kind of had the best of both worlds here because it had the strong start and it had the crisp animation. So it it had a lot of things that brought it together in the beginning. And the story is, 
I would say better than Demon Slayers, but honestly, it's still somewhat lackluster to me. As far as characters go, I don't like Yuji. I think Yuji's boring. Actually, you know what? I think the main three are somewhat boring. Megumi is the most interesting, but he's still kind of boring to me. I'd say Maki's my favorite, followed by Gojo, Nanami. I think that's that's probably the hierarchy I have right now. I don't like Yuta. I like Panda. So there's there's characters like characters I don't like. I don't like Mai. I like Toto. Like it it's it's on and off. And I think Jutsu Kaisen does a slightly better job at handling a large amount of characters. But I think what they do is they pick certain characters and give them a lot more time than others. Like uh I think Panda. I like Panda a lot. He doesn't get as much screen time as some of the others. Um, I think Maki gets a lot of screen time for being a tertiary character, and I love that. It kind of, it probably kind of depends on the arc, but I honestly feel like there are certain characters that they just want to be popular from the beginning, so they're always going to choose those characters when hyping up or giving an arc or giving special scenes to. Uh, I keep up with the manga for JJK not as strong as I do with My Hero, so I'm aware of things, not aware of everything. But I feel like story-wise, JJK is progressing nicely. I think the anime kind of paces it down a little bit. Shibuya aside, Shibuya, I think, moved pretty decently. I would say the first season moved a little bit slow. To the point where I don't remember all of the episodes because some of them kind of just felt like, you know, filler. Shibuya felt a lot more central and revolved. But I think that goes to show that, you know, you can you can have the animation, you can have the strong start, you can have a good strong set of characters that you keep strong. And that's the, the emphasis there is keep strong. Because even going back to, to Demon Slayer, I don't think the main three are that strong as characters. I think Inosuke is probably the strongest of the main three and probably the most liked. But I think he also gets the least amount of shine out of the three. Tanjiro obviously being the main and Zenetsu kind of being that the source of comic relief, exposition, and showcasing strength, that kind of puts Inosuke at three. The question would be, can Jujutsu Kaisen hold this grasp longer than the other ones did? Can it keep delivering high level quality content while extending the anime? Because at this point in My Hero, I think it's it's died out a lot in the fan base. Of course, there's still My Hero fans. Of course, people still love My Hero. The hype for My Hero has died down so much. Whereas Demon Slayer and Jutsu Kaisen still have their hype. And just to, to round it off, I want to talk about another one, which is Seven Daily Sins. Now, Seven Daily Sins had another strong start. People were really interested in the, the first season second season came out people were hyped for that too now after that it started suffering bad like not only was the anime having issues with like the, just the way it looked the production all that kind of stuff but the the manga was getting some flack for just overall being an uninteresting ending so i think the the ending of the manga was happening and people were just like nah this ain't it i'm not down with this so it kind of hit that wall of, okay, your anime is, is struggling, your manga is struggling. And all the hype really just died out. Like the fight of uh, Demon Meliodas versus Escanor the One. That's such a, a cool fight in the manga, but in the anime they kind of gypped it. And when you have big moments like that, that people are waiting for, that you kind of screw up. That kills your anime. And I, I haven't been back since. Like, I I read the ending of Seven Daily Sins. I haven't watched past season two, really. Just because I, I lost interest. And, I mean, Seven Daily Sins also had some questionable content in it time and again. And that also kind of killed its momentum. But what's crazy is that all, all four of the anime I mentioned here... 
were all once incredibly hyped by the community. And I think they all had that that title of like the next big three at some point. Maybe not Seven Daily Sins as much, but they the other ones for sure were like best new gen, you know, the newest big three. You know, it's not really a thing. They all kind of held that that title of ushering in a new era of anime. And I think slowly but surely they're all losing that title. JJK is still holding strong. Of all the ones I mentioned, I think JJK has the most claim to that title. But, you know, we'll see. I honestly don't expect the hype to die out. But I've been wrong before. But that's going to do it for me. You guys let me know what you think of all these anime down below. I know there's certainly going to be some people who disagree because... I, in a way, I, I am saying that some of these anime are mid. I'm, I'm saying My Hero's anime is mid. Demon Slayer, I'm also saying it's kind of mid. JJK, not there yet. Uh, Seven Days Sins, yeah, it's kind of mid. But I'm sure that people disagree. Because, I mean, you play Boruto. So somebody likes everything. So like I said, yeah, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.